Hello everybody, Buddy Webb, Midland, Texas. Uh, I've got a little video today that I think you'll find real interesting. <clears throat> it's basically a study of um, who used to live in this house, who used to own this house. And, and, and I, I think it's obvious that, that <clears throat> somebody that used to live here knows something about it being rigged with, with hidden access to be used for uh, burglary, theft, murder, etc., terrorism, spying, stalking, all that stuff. And and so, really, this morning, I, I got up and I was going through my uh, comments, and um, I was on Facebook. This is an old picture you're looking at, and actually, I'm looking at the comments on it. They're five years old. So, so it was like five years ago when this was posted, and somebody was going through the old stuff, and, and, and this guy, Blake here, he said, why has, no, why has no one said anything about the clear as day Ford Crown Victoria police cruiser behind the trailer? And he's talking about right here. And and I thought that was an interesting comment. I've never even thought about that. And, and he's talking about this one. He's believing to be the uh, the the white crown Vic. And interesting on the night that I was ambushed and shot, there was a white crown Vic that was the second car that showed up. It you know we found out later it was the late sheriff deputy Mike Naylor in that one. But I, I'm looking at this picture and just kind of analyzing it. it. It's from 2013 Google, okay? And I was ambushed and shot in January 2012. And what I was looking, well, I've always looked at it and thought, this vehicle right here looks like my white Ford Taurus in my driveway. And and uh, and then my, my truck's not there. And so, so I've long suspected that it was taken sometime while I was gone, okay? That be, because I, I sure don't remember these you know, here there's a construction trailer, like, you know, filled with tools and people doing work and all that, and then this one. And so uh, uh, I've, I, I even wondered if, if, you know, somebody was in my house and they were, you know, doing the rigging for this house, you know, for the crimes here or whatever, you know. And just interesting old picture. Anyways, I'm going to name this video the house, uh, and I've called this, I used to, I nicknamed it a long time ago, the house of 10,000 felonies. And and I'm, I'm like literal, I'm being literal, 10,000 felonies, imagine that, you know. But literally, this home was rigged for with hidden access to be used for burglary, theft, murder, theft of services. You know, the people that are breaking the house are still in the uh, heating, cooling, electricity, gas, electricity, etc. They're not paying any rent, they're not paying any any taxes you know they're not paying any utilities whatever the only thing they have to pay for is the bullets to put in their gun and and whatever money they're using to pay off the secret police gang to cover up the murders you know that that's the only thing they are out you know everything else is free to them of course it costs me and all the other people where they're rigging breaking in the homes okay anyways here on the internet it's called a date duration calculator okay and so i just punched in these dates november 9 2010 to today and that was 3,718 days, okay? So that's basically 10 years, two months, and four days since I made my first call for a burglary. Now, I had moved in here two years before that, okay? In in 2008, right after Mike Lawhon died, the previous owner. And and so I'm going to show you there. Let's, let's just say that... Uh, they broke in this house one time each day since. Then we we're, were talking 3,000, almost 4,000 days right there. Remember, house of 10,000 felonies? Well, if they come twice a day, then that's that's 8,000, you know, whatever. But even the, the previous owner, or uh, a neighbor, the next door neighbor told me one time when I first moved here, he said, the last four people living in your house didn't live there long, <laughs> you know, and the last one's dead, right? And I crawled out on my hands and knees to save my life in a premeditated home invasion capital attempted murder. I, I recently made a video showing that they cut my phone lines before they shot me, you know, premeditated. They bought a special bullet so they could murder me with, call it an accident. This is premeditated, cold-blooded murder. And then I've got, you know, a, another guy that had asked me, a local a businessman and, and mason in town had asked me if I knew the names of the four people that had been murdered, died in my home. Let that sink in. I was supposed to be the fifth because we've already got proof showing that there was premeditated. I mean, nobody accidentally breaks into a private home, accidentally cuts the phone lines, and accidentally shoots the homeowner by surprise. That's premeditation. That's cold-blooded Charles Manson-type killers here, you know, that have been free all this time. Scary, scary criminals.
criminals, you know, the scariest of the scary, you know, cold-blooded killers. Four people. Wow. I'm like, wow. So I did a recent video, video on this and trying to guess who these four people were before me, right? I mean, because I was supposed to be the fifth one, you know? And I've wondered about this guy, Rini Escobar Sanchez, still missing man, uh, went missing from uh, Odessa July 12, 2008, three months before Mike Lawn died, the previous owner. And the neighbor, they used to, a former neighbor used to live across the street, Marilyn Deluge, told me twice that Mike died in my house. And then she also said somebody else died here before him. And this guy went missing three months before Mike died. So I've wondered if it's him. And there's more, more to that story, and I've got a video on about that. Interestingly, a woman contacted me and told me that Mike was telling his friends about people. That's what this print screen at the bottom is. Mike was telling his friends about people breaking into this house before he died. And I tried to get the police records from before I moved here, when Mike lived here, and I was denied by the city, and I appealed it to the Texas Attorney General, and he upheld it, and so I was never allowed to get that, what I considered evidence. You know, because if Mike was reporting people in the attic before I moved in and reported people in the attic, then I'm ambushed and shot. That's huge, huge, you know, evidence and, and news in a, in a premeditated, capital-attempted murder left a man, an innocent homeowner, crippled for life. A guy that was reporting crimes to the police, you know. And and then, of course, here's the young girl, uh, or it's believed to be the young girl that was murdered at the 2010 old show. My friend Angie McGee at Hurley told me about a young girl who was murdered at a party she was at in uh, October 2010 during the Permian Basin International old show. Said the girl didn't want a prostitute and, and, and didn't wake up. And I tried to get Angie to report this, but she's afraid and said high-level police with the party. She was leaving my home and at the party in five minutes. So I believe it was in the underground homes here that multiple people said were here, including a recent candidate for sheriff. And then you can see here, I'm crawling out, you know, and, and I've said this before, you know. Well, why didn't you just call for help? Because they stole my cell phone and cut my phone lines before they shot me by surprise. That's why. And I have a video on that, which is which is uh, proof showing that they cut my phone lines, you know, literally. And that's what I'm saying. So anyway, this movie is about the past owners of this house. Okay. Here, I'm going to show you my first print screen here. I've got a bunch of them. This is a map that I, I created. It's uh, I call it the Deed History Map. And so I went to the Midland County Appraisal District and looked up the deed history for each of the nine homes in my little uh, secluded cul-de-sac. Okay, And and we're going to be focusing on my home at 3802 Fair Circle. Okay, now you can do this yourself. And, and, and all you have to do is go to, um, let's see if I can pull it up real quick. Go to midcad.org, okay, and then the Midland County Appraisal District.org, and and then you just do a property search right here, any address you want, and and then like Fair Circle, okay. There's Fair Circle. See, I'm gonna do a search on that, okay. And so here, here's the current owners of the addresses: 3800. Uh, Eli Vargas, uh, uh, 3801, Bruce Page, he owns, he owns Abel Locksmith, etc. Okay, and you can drill down like Buddy Webb. That's my home, 3802. And then there it shows here. And from here, I can find out when the house was built. And this house was built in 1982. It tells me what the square footage is, what the taxes is. and But the important part here is the deed history. Who used to own this house? Okay, because obviously somebody that used to own this house, here's the deed dates over here, it knows something about this home being rigged with hidden access for burglary, theft, and murder. They have information on capital crimes. Crimes that, that either, uh, you know, end up being life in prison or the death penalty. That's how big a deal this is. So that's where this map was built from, this deed history map. I went to the current owner and I looked at the deed history and, and we're going to primarily focus on just my home, okay? And right behind my home, of course, is, is Home Depot. But, but the, you know, there's stories. I've researched all the other ones here. Here's Eli Vargas. It, you know, he's the one that had the suspected tunnel entrance in the backyard that, get, that got removed around 2015 or whatever. Uh, plenty of stories there. Bruce Paget, he's a locksmith guy. He's the one that uh, I made a video about, you know, two or three uh, uh, dump trucks full of dirt being dumped in the backyard of this home right here. I was wondering if it was covering up underground tunnels, uh, basement, all that stuff. Okay, this home really interesting. It's straight across the street, 3803. And, 
it's now owned by Dustin Kirkland, but the former neighbor, Marilyn Deluge here, she's the one that told me that twice that Mike Lawhon died in my home, okay? And then she also told me somebody else died there before him. And then before she bought it, Ken Sliger owned that home across the street, and he was a uh, commercial director for my company that got laid off after I survived the murder down. And all our landmen reported to that group, okay? And in my backyard was, a, you know, it's believed to be one of the underground homes where they're having old show parties. Landmen are really connected, you know, uh, as suspects in there. Nick Todoro, he's an attorney here in Midland. I don't, I don't know anything about that Donald Lewis uh Freddie Halton, he's one of the people that lived here for one of the longest. He's a gun instructor. I think he used to be a truck stop pre preacher, you know, looking on the internet or whatever. And uh, and and so I thought that was interesting. This next home over, uh, this what I call the Conaway home. We'll talk about it more in a minute. But the brother, the late brother-in-law of U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway, John Legrand at the bottom, used to live in that house. And a person used to own my house was living in this house when I first moved here. We're going we're gonna to talk about that more in a minute. This house on the corner, that's the one that, uh, 3811 Fair Circle, it was the Martin house forever, but, but, uh, here my next door neighbor, Tulan Gwen, a Vietnamese lady, she's a retired pharmacist, I believe, she, she reported a burglary and the police come back and told her it was somebody at this house that had been inside her house and then after that they moved okay so the martins moved and then i've got there's plenty of stories about this house right here on 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 there it's had multiple owners you know and i've wondered if there wasn't underground access some, somewhere over there i don't know you know i don't know any of these homes might have underground access i don't i don't know that but anyway that's just the the, the quick uh story of the deed history here okay i'm gonna show you just some google maps and here let me go here first this this here is, is google earth pro it's free download okay and uh and here i'm gonna just do a search for midland texas and basically i'm gonna show you some of the tools that i use to to uh investigative tools of course law enforcement can do the same thing and anybody can y'all can Okay, so it, it zoomed in on my house, and you can see right here is the big Home Depot, Midland Home Depot store, and you can see the, the Target stores right there, and, 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 and I'll just zoom up. Okay, right off the bat, what you notice is, is there's a missing tree there. You know, it's real easy to see. That wasn't always missing either, and, and it's actually where that missing tree is is right next to where a suspected tunnel entrance was located at, and actually, I have a recent video where they're pouring concrete right there, too, and... Uh, and so there, there's plenty to look here. And the other thing here, this is my home here, 3802 Fair Circle. It shows you the little cul-de-sac right here, secluded cul-de-sac. And up here is this one. It gives you a timeline. So you can go back in time, okay? And I'm going to show you here. There's 2009, 2005. Let's go here, okay? This is 2011. This is six months before I was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home with bird alarms going to the attic. And what I want to show you is if we look here behind Home Depot, you can see where the asphalt's cut. See where the ground's a different color? I suspected a tunnel was bored coming in here. That's what I showed Homeland Security in 2019, uh, a couple weeks before it was dug up and they poured concrete there. Okay. And and so, but I just want to show you that's where I was suspecting maybe the, the entrance in my backyard. It looks like there was one of the underground facilities. So, Anyway, Google Earth gives you some tools, you know, you can use. Uh, and then this is Google Maps. This is just on the Internet. So you just go to Google and, you you know, maps.google.com. And then you can, and you get these. And this is different than Google Earth because Google Earth is a, uh, you know, a download, an application. Okay, this is right off the Internet. And, and I'll show you. I'll just put it in here. I'm going to zoom in. And there's my home right there, okay? 3802 Fair Circle right behind Home Depot. And and what, what I'm showing here is that in the backyard, you can see where there's this large building right there in the backyard, okay? And But when you switch over to the satellite screen, it's not there no more, okay? And I can zoom that up. But see, there is no building in the backyard right there. But it is on the map screen, okay? And and that's what I was saying before is, you know, I've got multiple people documented saying there's underground homes 
uh, here, three bedroom, million dollar underground homes, and I believe that is one of them. I believe that's where the oil show parties were going on, where that little girl was murdered at, that Angie told me about in 2010, and connected to most of all these crimes here. I mean, that you know, that that's the the big deal here. Let's look at some of these just screenshots. This one we looked at earlier. That's what we we're trying to figure out. Was wonder if that was a police car. Somebody said it looked like it was. Okay, this one here, and, and and this is really what we looked at on the internet, shows the map screen, and then it shows the sat screen. So you can see that Google is showing, so I've, you know, I've even suggested law enforcement, one of the many people law enforcement can, you know, ask where's the, where, where's the underground facility is Google. Why are you showing a large facility in the backyard here, you know, and it's not seen from above ground here, okay? And, and you know, obvious reason is, of course, that that's where one of the under million dollar underground homes is at, where them parties were going on, where that little girl was murdered at, okay? This is just a zoomed up picture to show you right there how easy it was to tell where that where that uh, uh, where the tunnel w was at you know that was going from the Home Depot store directly over to my house right here and uh, there was even a woman I recorded on a phone call said something about your den going into your den you know and that if you projected that out it goes right to my den you know what I mean that, that's that's what it looks like and it's probably cutting a straight line that's what I'm what I'm thinking this is one of the oldest map screens I got. And what I was looking at here in the back here, it looks like a ditch was cut in the backyard of my backyard. Also, there's a shed here that is not no longer there. But this ditch here, when I project this ditch out, it looks like it connected up here where some weird center blocks are buried on this corner of my house. And if you project it out there, it goes to where the, basically where that live tree was taken out and where the, where the suspected tunnel entrance over there. There's two side-by-side -side manholes right on the other side of the alley on the other side of that wall right there. But anyway, that's just showing an old map. This is a just a, an old picture I took before they repaved the concrete. And I was showing you, it looked like here... Uh, that's what it looked like. It looked like there might be a tunnel put in there going from this house to my house, okay? This house over here was the one that was owned by Marilyn Delugie, the woman that told me twice that Mike died in, in my home and somebody else died there before him. And then before that, the owner of this house was Ken Slager and he was the uh, commercial director for my company, DCP Midstream, right? And all our landmen reported to him. And of course, in the backyard of my house, that's where it's believed to be one of the underground uh, homes where they were having the parties. This is an old 50,000 foot view. Back out, look at it and go, hey, if you notice here, here's Midland Drive and you go behind tar Target right here and then it's you got to go back in here on this uh, leg right there. So basically what I'm saying, if you're driving by, you can't see behind Home Depot store. Okay, You can see that where you can't see back there. So it's secluded truck unloading lane. And that's where I, you know, I believed when I first moved here, they, they had this home rigged and they were using it for sex trafficking like a truck stop. And these trucks Trucks would just line up here in the afternoons. I mean, there'd be a whole lot of them. Nobody would be unloading freight, you know. And these trucks would show up 24-7, middle of the night. Uh, you know, the, nobody's there. The store's closed. It's a holiday. I mean, it was 24-7 business going on. You could hear the people in the attic, you know, moving around, going over. They were going over, meeting the truckers, coming back. I believe that they were doing. They were running uh, sex trafficking, maybe child sex trafficking, you know, lot lizards like a like a truck stop, you know. And then I was showing behind the you know where the live tree was taken out the open manhole uh, that picture was sent to the chief of police in 2012 after i'd survived the murder attempt proven murder attempt and this is sitting over in my neighbor's yard leftover piece of man-sized tunnel pipes what i call it it's some plastic uh sewer pipe big enough for a man to crawl in sitting out it's still there in front of my neighbor's yard right now you could drive by and look at it, okay? This is a more recent picture I did, and what I was showing you is here's what I believe is going on is is that the people at the at the old show parties or, or the underground parties were parking here in the Home Depot parking lot, and the excuse was, was uh, if you see a lot of cars in the parking lot late or not, it's because we're stalking. You know, I had a clerk tell me that just out of the blue, and, and, and so, you know, that it just makes sense. That's what was going on is the people at the underground parties, like at the 2010 Permian Basin International Old Show, where that little girl was murdered, 
you know, that believe happened in the backyard of my home here. One of the four underground homes. Maybe another one is over here in this empty lot a half block away because one woman said, you know, it's a half block away. And, and, you know, in here I'm showing where the tunnel. So it looks like they parked here, went underground here, come back through this tunnel here, and then they had access to this home and that home. And there's, you know, so, uh, supposed to be four underground homes, you know. that That's what was uh, said. Okay, and, and this one is uh, showing right after that uh, that uh, suspected tunnel entrance in the backyard of the neighbor's house was taken out. You can still see it on the ground where the where the grass hadn't grown over it, you know, and uh, I, yeah, I had made a point of it. I noticed it on the Google Earth pictures or whatever because you can't see from the ground. You know, I had these boards stacked up blocking your vision, and, and so you can't see from here. I'm trying to figure out, how, you know, is there a tunnel entrance anywhere near me? I got people coming into my home here, you know, and that's where I was ambushed and shot by somebody under my home, and also that live tree was taken out around the same time, 2014. I've got videos on all about that. Let's go back to the main thing here, okay? Here's the deed history of my home. Okay, we looked at it a minute ago. Well, not everything's on the internet. They're at Midcad, so I had to go down to the courthouse to and, and look at the property records. And I went all the way back, okay, once I got on their computers. And here's what I found. I'm going to show you. The original owner, it looked like... Abbott Development, okay, and they sold it to the grantor grantee to Tabor Construction in February 1982, okay, and and so uh, that was a year after I graduated high school. There's a warning deed, okay, so Abbott Development. So I did, you know, a lot of research on Abbott Development, and and I found out where Eugene H. Eugene Abbott owned Ab Abbott Development. He's the one who sold the lots to Tabor Construction in the 80s, okay? And he is on the board of the Midland Memorial Foundation. That's the hospital, you know. Now, that's the hospital I was at where it's proven that they faked my x-rays on the night of the murder attempt. I, I, you know, absolute undeniable, triple proof. They faked x-rays at the hospital and, and obviously done to cover up this home invasion murder attempt that a group of secret police were involved in, Okay. I've had people write me and says that that H. U. Eugene Abbott, he's related to Greg Abbott, but I don't know if that's the truth. You know, this was a book signing one day. Uh, you know, I, I bought a book, and and this is the governor, current governor of Texas, Greg Abbott. Okay, I got that picture. So I don't know if this H. Eugene Abbott's related to Greg Abbott. That'd be very interesting, wouldn't it? If the governor knew something about these million-dollar underground homes where these oil show parties and these forced prostitution murders were going on, you know, that'd be real interesting you know it's uh, you know I've, I've contacted so many people it's hard to believe that they don't know about it but you know how can you not know about homeowners all over texas reporting people in the attic and i'm ambushed and shot you know with burglar arms going my attic how can you not know that somebody has to go tell the press don't report that news story because how can we keep breaking in homes if you let the public know you know how can we keep committing these crimes against the innocent public if 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 news west 9 cbs 7 tells the public it's half these crimes are happening. You see what I'm saying? Somebody has to tell them that. Okay. So now we're on Tabor Construction. That's an Abbott Development sold it to Tabor Construction. Well, I get on there and Google, and I Google, you know, Tabor Construction, and I find out they had a listed address at 3217 Mark Lane. Okay, that's a home near my home. Okay, so I went again. I went over to Midcad to the appraisal district, and I looked up that home. Okay, and and you know, I think the current owner back then was a Randall Turner or whatever. Uh, here's another guy, Jerry Bryan's what it looks like in 2008. And then to my surprise, my emergency room doctor used to own the same home as Tabor Construction. Okay, this was the doctor that come to find out was the brother-in-law of the ex-wife that had filed divorce on five days before the murder attempt. She's alleged to be involved in the shooting. And he was there when them x-rays were faked on the night, night that I'm shot. I just didn't know he was my brother-in-law at the time. She's the one that told me later after the fact. And so you can see he owned... So the question's been asked if the ER doctor that I didn't know brother-in-law knew the people that were rigging, you know, Tabor Construction that built my home that's rigged, okay? Also interesting, the board of directors for Tabor Construction, Aaron Gobble, was on that board. 
a vice president of Tabor Construction, Aaron Gobble. Okay, Aaron Gobble died on the famous Clayton Williams uh, uh, Valentine's Day plane crash in 1990 when he was running for governor of Texas. Okay, now I also want to show you their forfeited existence in 2002. Tabor Construction is no longer in business, you know. And but you know these people, Betty Gobble. I mean, uh, here's a Richard Sachs. I, I don't know these people. And a Tim Tabor. Maybe you know. Maybe law enforcement asks them questions about rigging homes to murder people. You know. I mean. I mean. Think it's it's a fair question if they know something about. You you know uh, the construction of this home if it was rigged for crime you know for racketeering organized crime etc okay you can google this this is very famous clayton williams was a billionaire here out of million texas oil man okay and he died last year and uh, he's famous for several reasons and uh, but i want to show you this plane crash here he was running for governor of Texas at the time, and and the uh, Aaron Gobble died on that. The the so the vice president of the Tabor Construction, the builders of my home, just happened to die with five other executives on this famous plane crash. Also died on that plane crash was Randy Kidwell. You see him? He was a vice president for uh, for Advanced Telecommunications. Okay, I think they're right. Yes, right there. Randy Kidwell was married to Suzanne Kidwell that went on to marry uh, U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway, and her brother used to live across the street from my house. What a small world, ain't it? Ain't it a small world? And uh, how they're all connected. Let that sink in. I was a U.S. congressman. Okay, here's some information on Clayton Williams here. Uh, and he died, and, you know, I think it's ironic he died on, on, you know, Valentine's Day 2020 because five of his executives were killed on Valentine's Day, you know, 1990. Okay, and, and, and it's showing he sold his company here for over a billion dollars. So, so his family's billionaires, whatever, and, and like I said, uh, it, West Texas old man who derailed his 1990 campaign for a governor with a spate of crude remarks. And, and basically, that's really famous, you know, remark that Clayton Williams made. And it was something to the extent of, uh, you know, that that rape was like the weather. If you couldn't do anything about it, you just need to lay back and enjoy it, you know. And the press and the public, it, it, you know, he was ahead in the polls at the time and for the governor of Texas, and he lost that race. And a lot of that was attributed to him making this comment of, of, of about rape, you know. And... Uh, I think I read that that he frequented, you know, clubs or whatever. Okay, here, let's go to the first owner, Randy Offenberger. Okay, and that was on that list. We looked at the deed history. I want to go online here. Here's a picture of his Facebook, and I find out that he's a petroleum engineer for Pioneer Natural Resources, lives in Flower Mound now. I found that interesting because, you know, the underground homes are believed to be used for oil show parties. Pioneer is a very large oil company here in Midland, Texas, you know. And I had one guy tell me one time, says, oh, them company homes over there, as in oil field companies, you know. And I wondered if there was people in pioneer that had you know had maybe there were pioneer employees at the oil show parties or pioneer had some connection to the million dollar underground home and the oil show parties which would mean you know the the capital murders like the murder of the little girl at the 2010 oil show party so but anyway interestingly randy offenberger was a was a, a engineer for pioneer okay I pulled the work permits for my house, and I found the only work permit was for a sprinkler install right here in 1985. This home was built in 1982. Randy Offenberger was the first uh, owner, and he gets a work permit to uh, to install a sprinkler system, okay? And I've got videos about this. Okay, and here's what I'm showing in this picture. If you notice that the, the base or the foundation of the home is buried under about a foot to foot and a half of dirt, okay, which wasn't there originally, and you know, because that one that's against code, you never do that. And so sometime after this home was built in 1982, there was a, a huge amount of dirt that was placed on top of the lawn. I've suspected it come from the basement building. And instead of hauling it off, 
off, they spread it out, you know, and that's why there you have to dig down to get to the foundation. And so now the ground actually come up, you know, about a foot to foot and a half deep. Well, the question is, was that done during the sprinkler, you know, install? Because, you know, sprinkler would have digging, right? And so they could, you know, if they had equipment here digging or whatever, they go, oh, I got to work from it. And that's why we're digging, you know, or, or maybe this is when the tun tunnels was put in was the question. Maybe Offenberger needs to be asked about this sprinkler permit. The other thing is, if if the if the sprinkler system was put in before the dirt was added on top, then it would have buried the heads. Okay, when they put the dirt on top of it. But if the sprinkler system was done after or during when the dirt was put on, then the heads would be level. And that's what I found. I I, I dug down and I didn't find where they cut the pot and put a riser in there. They actually, you know, it was actually put in so the dirt was added sometime during or after the sprinkler was was installed that was 1985 and what's in what's interesting here is layla o'brien she's a cad programmer out of houston she told me she worked on this project okay and and she said that it uh it was 7.35 million dollars on, on permit cost of the project it used to be called safe houses okay and i talked to her more than just this is what she posted in my facebook but she believed the bushes were involved in in these underground at the time she said it was finished in 1987 and at that time george hw bush was vice president of the united states iran contra was going on back then you know and here we are right here midland texas secluded truck on loading lane behind this house they're called safe houses etc you know and so uh but the timing of finished in 1987 fits with the sprinkler what i'm saying with the work permit of 1985 okay so that was all in when was this home rigged for burglary theft murder organized crime racketeering etc okay the next homeowner and we'll go back here is morris kurt that's his facebook and i must show you here we're looking at the deed history Okay, and so here at the bottom, it, you can see where Offenberg, 85 sprinkler permit, and then he sold it to Morris Kurt. I, I don't have the date that he sold it to him on, on here because I had to go to the courthouse to get that information. Okay, but it shows Morris Kurt sold the property in 2003 to Brandy Merrill. So Morris Kurt and his family lived here. Well, who is Morris Kurt and does he know anything about the crimes here, right? I mean, you know, you know, I mean, we're talking, does he have information on capital murder? So I, you know, I just Googled him. Well-known guy, former teacher. I believe he was a teacher at Alamo Junior High. He was a science teacher and a coach. I found that online, okay? And so obviously a lot of people, we had mutual friends, okay? And and so you know that that's all the question is. Uh, just because you live here doesn't doesn't mean that you know that this home is rigged for for crime and racketeering. Found this right off Morris's Facebook post. His son's a police officer. That's really interesting since there was a dozen police or eleven of them caught on camera. Uh, you know, accidentally started the camera, caught themselves covering up the home invasion murder attempt of my life. It's actually you know questioned if maybe it was some police working with burglars that tried to murder me in my home because I had trapped a burglar during a home invasion on the day of the murder attempt. But this guy's named Rocky, and he's a Midland police officer. I don't know if he still is or not. And I'm assuming he's the son or related to, to uh, Morris Kurt, the teacher, okay? Okay, this guy threatened me, okay? This is one of the sons, and I, I'm going to show you here in a minute. Here's where he works. And uh, and so right off the bat, you know, that's real real odd, I think. It, it throws up red flags, you know. Here, you know, you know I consider myself, you know, pretty upstanding member of, you know of the of the community you know i mean I, I i led the united way drive to raise money for the needy you know i don't go to the bars you know i'm a christian you know i try to be a law abider and and you know i'm not perfect by no means but you know this guy just attacked me and i'm going to show you here and that and so that's a clue maybe zane kurt knows something about underground homes and if you do then you have information on capital murders life sentence death penalty cases okay and here's the zane yeah don't talk about my family on your post uh, i already have seen our information when you post you bring up uh, lived in that house half my life half the holes etc etc 
Okay. See, okay, you're crazy. See, and there we go. The guy that saved up $2,000 worth of disability money to get identified 11 secret police, first known secret police in the history of America, right? And you're calling me crazy? I don't think so, you know. The, the evidence is very clear, you know. That, that was the lies used to cover up the, the home invasion murder to my life. And then Kelsey Kirk, I think it's another one of kids, and she posts this. Somebody sent me this in my, and, and said, look what this Kelsey's posting about you. Sick puppy with Parvo, okay? And and here here's my, uh, my ID on there. And so for some reason, I suspect that maybe Zane and Kelsey, the kids, and maybe even the parent, Morris, know something about this home being rigged for uh, organized crime, racketeering, murder, etc. okay? Okay, the next owner at Brandy Merrill Price. We're going to go back and I'm going to show you here. Okay, here, Morris Kurt sells his home in July 2003 to Brandy Merrill. Okay, and then it looks like she refinanced there once. And then she finally sold it in 2006 to Mike and Sarah Lawn, right? The previous owners when I bought it. Okay, and so what happened? I have a line drawn down going over here to the Conaway home. Okay, uh, to the home that was owned by the brother-in-law of U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway. Okay, and and from Brandy Merrill. Okay, and the reason is because she married Daniel Price. And when I moved in, they were living in this home that used to be owned by Jean Lejeune, the brother-in-law of U.S. Congressman Mike Conaway. Okay, and I'm going to show you here in a minute. I'll show new toilet. And I'm going I'm to tell you that story in a minute. So Brandy Merrill was a past owner of my home. Maybe she knows something about this home being rigged with underground access, etc., here, I, I just Googled her, Brandy Price the Third, Vice President of Public Affairs, Atmos Energy. That's interesting because, you know, when I first bought this home, uh, you know, uh, on the inspection of the, oh, we got to replace the gas pipe, you know. So I had to, we split the cost between the seller and the buyer, paid for this pipe to be put in. Well, I finally, after all the crimes, I noticed that this pipe was just this huge size, you know, way larger than any other home, you know, whatever, you know, that's coming to my home. They put in this huge pipe coming to my home and, and from Atmos Energy, from the gas. And I, and I even wondered, like on my fireplace, I could never get fire to come out the gas valve. And I wondered if it wasn't cut, taken below grade, below ground where they could steal gas, natural gas, you know, and, and, and as, part of this uh, human trafficking and, and the crimes of uh, people breaking into the homes and, and still in services and murdering homeowners, etc. Okay. And so he, here it is. And then also interesting, she used to work for the Midland Reporter Telegram. Let's see, she quit in December 2012. So that means she was working for the Midland Reporter Telegram, the newspaper here, uh, when I was ambushed and shot, and that's one of the newspapers here that is hidden the fact that that you know so much information. You know they hid the fact that homeowners all over Midland, Odessa, are reporting people in the attic, while the city is saying nobody's reported people in the attic. They hid the fact that a crime victim offered a two thousand dollar reward to identify police. You know they uh, they hid from the public the fact that a sheriff candidate was on record saying her last sheriff used to hang out in these underground homes here. Yeah, I mean it's just a ton of of, of important, huge news stories. Uh, proof of doctors faking x-rays at the hospital. You know, you'd think the public would want to know that? You know, so anyway, that's who Brandy Merrill used to work for. I, th I thought that was interesting. Okay. We're going to look here, okay, and and basically I'm showing the deed history of my home, and that's what I showed you, deed history of that home, okay, at, at the Con what I call the Conaway home. John Lejeune owned it. Uh, 2004, and this is his obituary. He's no longer alive. This is the brother-in-law of of Suzanne Conaway. Now, remember, Suzanne used to be married to Randy, Randy Kidwell that died on the famous plane crash for Clayton Williams, along with Aaron Gobble, the vice president of the company that built my home. Okay, remember, we went over that a minute ago, and I, I'm just showing you here. We're looking at you know the obituary. Here's a Gary Click. I, I looked him up. I think he's he's in jail or whatever. Terry Lejeune, John Erdre. Dorsey Lejeune, Suzanne Conaway. And that was the point I was making. And then they had another sibling named Marsu Wilson, and the current owner of the house is named Wilson. So I'm even wondered if this house is still in the Conaway family, right? Because of that, because of, uh, of the Wilsons, you know? And so I was going to show you that. And married, here we go, 
uh, you know, put it down to Daniel Price is where uh, she married him. And and then the other owners of the house, John David Ward, I don't know anything about Cody Prindle. I've searched it, but he's gone now. The other thing here, I did this a long time ago. I hadn't showed this a long time. There's two toilets in the house. My ex-wife used to be a real estate appraiser. She told me one time, she said, let me tell you how to date a house, you know. You just go lift up the toilet lid and, and you look inside and there's a date stamped in on top inside the uh, toilet. Most homes never replace the toilet. So whatever that date is, is the year they built it. Okay, that's what she told me. Okay, well, I have two two toilets, two bathrooms here. One of them is stamped in 82 when the house was built just by, you know, we already looked at that evidence. This one has been replaced. Okay, in 04. Okay, that's when Brandy Merrill lived here. So the question was asked, that, that, that would be a major remodeling job to replace the toilet, you know, and, and so was that done in any kind of coordination of, of rigging this home with remote access to be used, you know, for burglary, theft, murder, organized crime, etc., human trafficking, whatever. And so, uh, you know, that was something law enforcement could talk to Brandy Merrill about, you know. Conaway. Okay, I contacted our congressman. I've contacted hundreds of local, state, you know, national reporters, uh, senators, congressmen, presidents, you know, every law enforcement group you can think of, the Rangers, the FBI, the, you know, the DEA, the DOJ, the IG, etc. Okay, well, you know, I, I, will, I talked to Congressman Conaway on a town hall meeting, on a, you know, on a phone call. He invited me down to meet his staff and, and, and tell him my story. I did that, and then I get this official letter back from Congressman Conaway. This is in 2015, okay? And he's basically, he's telling me, he says, I understand your concerns, uh, but this is illegal in nature and outside my jurisdiction. Uh, I suggest you refer it to the Office of the Inspector General of the Department of Justice. Well, I contacted the uh, Inspector General about a hundred times via email and phone calls and never got a reply back. I was sent on a dead end by U.S. Congressman back way back in 2015. And and so, uh, and, and I'm putting here, I'm showing you here, you know, his brother-in-law used to live across the street from my home, okay? And that's kind of interesting, right? His brother-in-law used to live across the street from my home, and, and the congressman sends me on a dead end, you know, and, and what, a capital murder case, right? A capital attempted murder case, multiple murders, okay? Well, in 2019, and, and this is just a side story, I showed Homeland Security where I believe the uh, where the tunnels were, you know, the, the human traffic and murder tunnels, okay, behind Home Depot. I showed you on the map a while ago. Well, two weeks later, on July 17th, they're digging up the ground. They're pouring concrete right there. Pouring concrete right where I showed them where the murder tunnels were at, you know. Is that amazing, you know? You could see where the tunnel was coming from my house, okay. Well, I caught this on video, and it went viral, of course, and and, and just uh, a few days later, I'm going to show you this, okay? July 30th, 2019, U.S. Congressman Conaway retired from Congress, okay? And so I want you to look at the, the dates on that. Concrete was poured on July 17th, 2019, and I got it on camera, okay? I had met Homeland Security behind Home Depot on July 2nd, 2019. On the 17th, two weeks later, they're pouring concrete right where I, you know, right, and some people have questioned that. Was this done, was this tampering with evidence in a capital murder? Because that would be a death penalty case. If somebody said, uh, no, you know, tried to obstruct justice in a capital murder, that's very, very serious penalties right here. And then all of a sudden, here's congressman that set me on a dead end. This is the dead end congressman, you know, retires, you know. And so, once again, your public, your Midland Reporter Telegram and everybody else, they've hit Hidden these stories from from the public, you know. So let's go look at the next one on the list, Mike Lahan, right? And Mike, I talk about quite often because that I bought this home from his widow. He died. He was alive when I first looked at the home, and then two weeks later, he's dead, you know. And then she drops the price thirty five thousand dollars and offers it to me. I'm later told by the ex wife, "You were chosen to buy this home." Okay, and and I'm, I'm not gonna make this about Mike Lahan because this is a big story in itself. But I found out that he was telling his friends about people were breaking in this house before before he 
he died. Same thing I'm reporting. I tried to get the police reports for this home. I sent in a request to the city, and they denied me the police reports for my own home before I moved here. Okay, I appealed to the Attorney General Paxton, and he he also denied it. So I, you know, I hear I'm looking for evidence in capital murders, and they're denying me access evidence on my own home. Okay, the police reports for my own home because I wonder if Mike Lawton wasn't reporting people in the attic before he died. You know, because I was reporting people in the attic when I was ambushed and shot with my phone lines cut. You know. He married Sarah, Sarah Buchanan. Um, you know, maybe they want to talk to her. Maybe she, you know, because I, I suspect somebody enticed her to drop that price, thirty-five thousand. Had the mom Sue Tennis? She used to, uh, she used to live here in Midland. She used to work for Clayton Williams, the billionaire. I think she managed the Plaza Club, his private club. Okay, and then she's working at a country club in Fort Worth, and now she's dead. Okay, that was one of the places Mike Lawn uh, supposedly died at. Susan McGana, a sister. She she called me on the phone and gave me information such as uh, telling me that there was another brother named Brian Tennis. He's also on this list. That there he is below her, Brian Tennis, and said that Brian was a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. And she just blurted that out and told me that after seeing that I'd found a Kansas City Chiefs cap under the cabinet from where I was ambushed and shot. And then there's another person on here. Pickering, Barbara Pickering, very rude comments I'm going to show you here in a minute. So maybe, you know, just based on that, when you attack a crime victim, it throws up red flags and all of a sudden you're going to start getting questioned on a capital attempted murder case. You know, I mean, that, that makes sense. And if you know something about million dollar underground homes where they're murdering little girls, I, I think that'd be real important to come clean about. You know, I wouldn't be keeping the murdering little girls, capital murder, death penalty cases secret. So if you know about them underground homes, you know you have information on capital murders. Okay. Michael Don, here's one of one of the obituaries, you know, or his death notices. And you know, there was two death notices. Uh, the first one said he he died in Fort Worth, and then four days later they changed to say he died at his residence. Okay, and he, here in Midland. And but his his uh, death certificate says he died at his his mom's house, Susan Dennis, in Fort Worth. Okay, and he died of acute propoxyphene intoxication. That was Darvaset, whatever. And you know, and interestingly, the ex-wife had told me, you know, the secret is a group of doctors are killing people for profit. I bet you a group of doctors could tell you exactly what that propoxyphene was. You know, and I suspected that he was uh, chased down and, and injected with a lethal dose of drugs. You go to Odessa American, you can do it right now. Google it, William Michael Don Lahan, Odessa American, and you'll see what I'm saying. They posted the first death notice here on the 14th, October 14th, saying Mike died in Fort Worth. And then four days later on the 18th, see it on the 18th, they changed it to say he died at his residence. Okay, well, that didn't happen automatically. Somebody had to do that. And you got the neighbor saying that he died here at this residence. Okay, and you know, twice she told me that. You know, so obviously somebody at the Odessa American has some questions to answer about why they've got two death notices posted for Mike Lawn in two different towns. Okay, I believe it's murdered or carried to Fort Worth the next week was starting the Permian Basin International also. First day I looked at the home, I took pictures. This is one of them pictures. That was October 1st, 2008. And I just I just show this picture because it shows that the, there's nothing wrong with the back door. See the door handle there? Okay, you can see it. But 28 days later, I met Perkins Brazier here, the home inspector, and we found a hole in the laundry room door. Somebody had kicked that doorknob out during that month, and that was dated. This report, inspection report, was dated October 28th, and so this this picture was on October 1st. So during this time period, somebody kicked in that doorknob, and on October 12th, Mike Lawhon died. I believe whoever kicked in that doorknob murdered Mike. They injected him with uh, propoxyphene and intoxication or whatever, you know, Darvacet. And then took him to Fort Worth, okay? And so this is communications from Brian Tennis. This is the brother of Mike, half brother of Mike Lahan. And remember, his sister Susan McGaina had called me and told me that that Brian was a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. I had found a Kansas City Chiefs cap under the cabinet from him, shot from. I knew it had been left after the concrete was poured. Okay, after I had been shot, you know. So obviously, huge clue, you know. And then she just happens to blurt out that their brother here is a big Kansas City Chiefs fan, and. 
basically he's telling me Susan doesn't know what she's talking about. My brother choked his wife with a rifle and they had to be taken down by me. Uh, he never fired a weapon in this house. So all of a sudden there, you know, it, it was talked down. He was talked down by me. That tells you that there was a confrontation between Brian Tennis and Mike Lawhon before Mike died in two different towns. Okay. The week before the, the 2008 oil show started. Maybe Brian Tennis wants to, uh, you know, maybe law enforcement wants to ask Brian Tennis some questions. You know, Stephanie Black Stevenson. Okay, she writes me, and you know, and and some of this didn't make sense, but she said her uh, my neighbor across the street told me her friend bought that house after the murder, uh, and and said then sold it to you. She said that everything you are saying is a fact, and that the neighbors wouldn't even speak to her about all the stuff she was telling them. Okay, and so that was just confirmation that Sarah Lahan might know something about this, about the crimes here, you know. And uh, here's the uh, the schedule for the 2008 Permian Basin International Oil Show. Now, the young girl, I believe, was murdered at the 2010 Permian Basin International Oil Show. That's when Angie told me about the young girl being murdered. But I want, I want to show you is the date, October 20th. That's when it started. Mike died October 12th. And so, so Mike died a week before the 2008 International Oil Show started, which seems really important since it looks like there's an underground facility in the backyard, right? We already saw that, right? You can see it right now on Google Maps. Here's Barbara Pickering, another one of these uh, uh, siblings of Mike Lahan that's believed to be murdered here, okay? And she's extremely rude, and so I think law enforcement should extremely investigate her and find out what she knows. And if she knows something about million dollar underground homes here then she has been withholding evidence in capital murders that's the way i look at it you need to get some help leave my i'm i'm the sister of mike Lahan and the daughter of susan tennis okay no i meant psychiatric help screenshot that too for your hard facts okay the people that are 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 defaming my character because because see i was you know i was cleared at my mental health at the hospital obviously because i'm a crime victim right obviously and it was the people involved in the crimes that have been spreading these life destroying lies about me and that's what barbara pickering's doing and and so one tampering with a witness and and i'm a witness to a to a capital attempted murder which carries a life sentence right I, I'm the witness because I'm the victim, right? Tampering with the witness right there, uh, you know, is uh, is against the law. To know and to know that these underground homes are here, where where your brother used to live in this home, where your brother was murdered at, and then attack the innocent, crippled crime victim with these life destroying lies, and then then you know you have some questions to answer for law enforcement. Barbara Pickering, I will be sending this video over to law enforcement when I'm done with it, you know, and and so if you got a secret, you know, I advise you to not keep secrets about capital crime. Crimes, you know, and maybe they're going to ask you why you're a wrongfully attacking a crime victim, harassing a crime victim, tampering with a witness. Okay, this is the city of Midland Request Center, and basically there's the number there of where I requested the records for this home when Mike Lawhon died here, and I was turned down, and that went all the way up to the. Uh, to the Texas Attorney General. So so anyway, there's a lot of information up there and a lot of leads for law enforcement, you know, because because one thing we know for a fact that the remains of a young girl were found outside of Midland and in, in 2013. And my friend told me about a young girl murdered at an oil show party in 2010. I believe it's in that underground home in the backyard that most people said we're here. And I got a feeling somebody used to own this house knows something about it. But anyway, Midland, Texas.